Oh, two shots. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ah, Miami Wait. Vice comes out on DVD February. Yeah. Do you have to sign off you on that? You know what? Miami Vice, uh, they had it on DVD. I think they're reissuing it. We rolling? Yeah. yeah. I got to talk about this because Miami Vice comes out on DVD in February, and I've been waiting for it. I know it's going to be a little dated feeling. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, you know, it, it, in a way, it's a classic. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that created a whole sense of fashion and design. Uh, and that's a, it's one well, of the... the cutting of it? Yeah. I mean, it was MTV cutting and this, the Absolutely. angles and the fact that you stopped the dialogue to let music go up full. Exactly. We used music in a way it hadn't been used yeah. in television before. And so uh, as the director of that original pilot, uh, I, I really feel proud of, of, of what we created. And, and the city of Miami, it's funny, so embraced the TV oh. show and felt like the TV show influenced the city as much as vice versa. And it was a real um, symbiotic relationship there. So was Michael Band over your show to tell him we need to have more lights on buildings and stuff uh, like that? I mean, you what know, was he doing uh, there? Uh, Michael was actually very supportive when I was shooting. He actually was not with me that much in Miami. He was back in Los Angeles, but he had some really good ideas about some of it. And um, I had some, some strong ideas about how I wanted to use music music in it, um, and really to create well, good for uh, you. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah, music and montage. That's a really symbiotic yeah. television show that changed a lot of things out yeah. there. But, and, and I never did get off on the fashion because I just couldn't see myself <laughs> being Crockett or Tubbs. Uh, come You're on. more of a Tubbs kind of character. Yeah. Although I could see you doing Crockett as well. Yeah. Uh, this is an important movie, and boy, I sure hate to say that because that might scare people away. But it really is. Well, an you know, it's an movie. important movie, but I think it's an entertaining. Oh, it movie. absolutely is. You know, we got a really strong message in this movie, but I really wanted to make a movie too that was going to involve people. It's going to be funny and have them have yeah. a sense of humor. It was going to be good basketball. Poignant, it's good great basketball. Great basketball. Some exciting basketball. So if you're a basketball fan, mm -hmm. you can go to this movie and actually enjoy the action of the games. Uh, but yes, we have something to say in the movie. Um, we want to talk about, and we want people talking about the importance of education uh, compared to athletics. And and that's something that Ken Carter said. I demand excellence on the court, but I also demand excellence in the classroom. Have you ever met a guy like this? I, I haven't. I've had coaches, but not anyone quite like him. Uh, no, he's something, no. isn't he? He's, he's a, a little bit of a TV preacher. He, he is slash he, basketball coach. He, he is. He's he's he, uh, he's 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 got it all going yeah. on. You know, tremendous personality, an intense guy, and he brought that as a coach. You know, a strong intensity but a great sense of humor, you know, and so he was able to inspire these kids, yeah. some of these kids who had never, uh, I think, had strong role models before and also make demands of them. Well, he's built like a tank, so yeah. I wouldn't want to mess with him. He was a little guard, you know, he was great. He was an All-American guard, Ken Carter, and he got a, a basketball scholarship, and his son came along after yeah. him, played on his team, and broke all his records. But how timely, you know, since sports has gotten real stupid in the last couple of yeah. months with fans fighting with players, yeah. players fighting with fans, and all that business. So there is a, I, I we do need a time out right we, now to reevaluate. We do, and we need to take a look at what we're doing in sport. I mean, whether it's baseball or basketball yeah. or football or any of it, we need to take a look at what we're asking of athletes and what we put value on, you know. Um, we don't want to compromise those uh, those ethics and those values, and so. The, but it's the way out of the ghetto for a lot of people, and whole families attach themselves to this meal ticket. And it's but here's, here's the problem, the problem is that when we say it's a way out of the ghetto, or that old adage is a ticket out of the ghetto, for how many people? For a small yeah. fraction of Ten, people. Five. And you know what? Getting out of the ghetto, if you, if you, uh, if you have no education, you're going to lose all that money. Right. I mean, the, the road is littered with guys who say, well, we got out, we made some money, but we, had, we didn't have the education to Mike keep Tyson. it. So if you don't learn, if you don't study, if you're not prepared, you know, then you're not going to hold that money anyway. But that's such a small fraction. Yeah. What we're talking about is all those kids the vast, vast 99.9% .9 of young people who are not going to be pro athletes anyway. And so when you graduate high school, have you taken that science class and done well, or that right. math class, that history class? Are you prepared to go on to become a doctor or a lawyer or a small business owner? Whatever, that's what the preparation is. No one can take away your education. No one, no one. And nobody can give it to you if you don't commit to it yourself. And somewhere along the line, this man studied Art Deco. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, man, thank you. Yes, so really, I mean, who...